We're about to go over the most 10 common times landlords consider breaking their no eviction rule. People always ask me, is it okay to rent to somebody who has a previous eviction on their record? Short answer, no. Long answer, fuck no. But, but, no matter how many times I say it, no matter how clear I am, uh, I, I just get landlord after landlord, investor after investor who's always trying to talk themselves into it like this one specific situation is somehow different than the others. So what I did, folks, in no particular order, I compiled a list. These are the 10 most common times I see you guys try to talk yourselves out of the blanket no evictions policy, right? These are the 10 most common times. You guys go, well, my situation's a little bit different. Number one, if the eviction is over seven years old, people tell me this all the time, like, oh, it's not on the record anymore. It's over seven years old. I don't even know if evictions fall off after seven years. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. If you found out that information, that means the tenant told you, like, hey, I may have had an eviction, but it's not on my record. Then you get landlords who are like, oh, it's not on my record. It's not on their record, so it must not count. Must not count? Count to who, motherfucker? You're the one that needs that information, and you have that information. Don't be fucking stupid. Don't rent to that person. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Number two, if they lost their job to COVID. Hey, man, that sucks, but you know what? People lose their jobs all the time. Are you running a business or a charity? Coronavirus! Number three, if they got sick. That fucking sucks, man. It really sucks to get sick. But you know what? If you got sick, can you call up your tenant and say, Hey, dog, I'm sick. I'm going to need you to pay triple the rent. Ain't nobody got time for that. Number four. If the eviction was before they found Jesus, right? We see this all the time. Born again Christians, right? Hey, man, this guy's awesome. He's going to church. You know, he's really changed his life. Look, I don't give a fuck if that motherfucker is Jesus Christ himself, if Jesus Christ himself came up to me like, hey, man, I want to rent your 2-1, I'd be like, fuck you, Jesus. You got an eviction on your record eight years ago. <laughs> Number five, if they had to take care of a sick family member. Hey, man, I had to quit my job and take care of a sick family member, dude, my grandma, blah, 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 blah. Who gives a fuck, motherfucker? I don't give a fuck. I feel bad for you as a human being that your grandma got sick, dude. Everybody has a grandma. Everybody knows how that feels. However, I will. I need to ask you guys. If your grandma got sick, just like before when you, uh, we're talking about you getting sick yourself. If your grandma got sick, landlords, could you call up your tenant and be like, Hey, dude, uh, I can't work my day job because my grandma's sick. Can you pay triple rent? No, that sounds fucking stupid, wouldn't it? Number six, if the eviction wasn't their fault. Oh, my God. I fucking, if there was an order to this list, this would need to be at the top of things that fucking piss me off. You get this all the time. Oh, oh it wasn't my fault, man. It wasn't my fault. And they come up with all these fucking excuses for why that isn't their fault. Number one, let me tell you guys. They're probably lying. All right. Nine times out of ten, yes, it was their fucking fault. Evictions are expensive. They take a lot of time. Landlords don't go out there and just try to evict people. Why would we spend a whole bunch of money to try to remove an income stream, right? Makes no goddamn sense, okay? That's the first thing we got to talk about. The second thing is on that tiny, tiny little off chance it really wasn't the tenant's fault. Well, you know what? Who gives a fuck? Your job is not to go out there and to save everybody, guys. We are real estate investors. When we're doing our tenant screening, we are mitigating risk. You can never, ever eliminate all risk, okay? That means some things are going to fall through the cracks, and you have to play the odds. Think about it like a professional blackjack dealer or something like that, right? You know, professional blackjack card player. Well, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm talking about, right? Those people that get kicked out of, you know, the casinos because they, like, you know, know how to do the numbers. Card counters or whatever. Anyway, back to what I'm trying to say. People will always be like, oh, you get that, like, one in a hundred chance where it really wasn't the tenant's fault and they didn't really do anything wrong. And people are like, what about this? Okay, that's great, bro. If I see hooves, I'm going to think horses, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's a zebra. Your job is to mitigate your 
risks here, folks, and here's a risk. If you're going to go into a court battle with somebody, do you want to go to court with somebody who's already taken a landlord to court and won, or do you want to go to court with somebody where you have more experience than them? Does that mean one out of 100 times a good tenant out there doesn't get a house from you? Sure, but your job isn't to house everybody. Your job is to mitigate your risks as much as possible when you are filling your investment property. Number seven, if the eviction happened when they were on drugs, but hey, they've changed their life. You know, this arguably is very similar to the uh, they found Jesus one. Look, man, first of all, I've been in this game a long time. Uh, I'm not going to say once a junkie, always a junkie, but hey, look, let's uh, let's be realists here. Uh, the uh, relapse rate is incredibly high, and again, on the off chance that that small minority really did change their life and they turned it around, that's freaking great. Congratulations to them, but hey, your job is not to find those people and give them a helping hand. Your job is to mitigate your risks as much as humanly possible when you are running your investment property business. So is it possible a very small portion uh, of reformed previous drug abusers are going to fall through the cracks and not get a house from you? Sure, but who cares? That's not your job. Your job is to mitigate your list, your risks. We must play the odds. They have a higher than average shot at being a problem tenant, so you can't rent to them. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. Come on, man. Number eight, if they need to, to choose to put food on their table versus paying rent, right? This could be combined with some of the other ones. Family member got sick, lost my job. Look, Mr. Landlord, I got evicted. It was 10 years ago, right? We'll combine that with the past seven-year thing. But here's the deal. I got three kids, man, and if, if, if you know, my choices were I, I couldn't feed my kids or I didn't have to pay the rent, you know, the old man would kick me out. First of all, number one, they're vilifying uh, the landlord. The landlord didn't kick you out. The landlord didn't evict you. You evicted yourself. Uh, because you can't take care of your basic responsibilities as an adult, which is a roof over your kid's head and food on their fucking plate. Uh, that's notwithstanding, though. Look, here's the deal, man. Bad shit happens, right? It's up to them as human beings to plan for them. The same way we talked about the people getting sick. If you, as a landlord, lost your day job, you can't call your tenant and be like, hey, uh, little Jimmy and little Timmy and little Susie are hungry, and uh, I can't afford to feed them this month, so I'm going to need you to pay quadruple the rent, right? They're not going to fucking do that. So when you flip it around, why is it now your responsibility to work with them? It's not. Ain't nobody got time for that. Number nine, they have a cosigner. God, I hate this one. This one is like saying, hey, man, I'm a fucking piece of shit, okay? I fucking suck at being an adult. I am such a piece of shit that my word is garbage. However... Here's my buddy or my mom or my brother or my sister. They are not as big of a piece of shit as I am. So they're going to go ahead and sign on the paper and uh, they'll take partial responsibility for me being a piece of shit because I've proven to you that I am a piece of shit. Guys, what are you doing? The piece of shit's going to be living in your house. Sure, there's a little bit re less risk there because the non-piece of shit... Okay, the non piece of shit is going to sign for the piece of shit. But first of all, I want to know how come Mr. Non piece of shit over here doesn't house the piece of shit? Why should you house the piece of shit? And then the second point I want to make is look, guys, one part uh, of uh, people being afraid of evictions, yes, it's that it goes on your record and it hurts your record, hurts your credit, hurts your ability to get a new apartment or house in the future. Yes, that is that. But also, probably the bigger thing is if you get evicted, you become fucking homeless. And I don't know about you guys, but outside of Ten City, pretty much everybody hates being fucking homeless, okay? So, Mr. and Mrs. Cosigner, right? You can't make them homeless. Maybe they own their own home. They never need to rent from another landlord. So why in the hell would you talk yourself into going out of limb for some piece of shit who can't pay their bills and they know it? And last but not least, folks, number 10, okay? This is somebody who's like, hey, man, I'll pay a double deposit uh, or pay, I'll pay a year up front, right? Okay? I'm such a fucking piece of shit, and I know it. 
that I'll pay the piper. I'll pay more than all the other people who aren't pieces of shit. And uh, then you'll give me the house, right? No! Folks! No! 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 You cannot do that. First of all, here's the thing. This, this is something that I bet a lot of you don't know, right? There's a lot of crazy landlord-tenant laws out there, right? One of which has to do with security deposits, folks. Uh, like, I'll, I'll give you one. Here in Ohio, which is where I run my property management business, Ohio's a red state, okay? So I don't even want to talk about what a fucking blue state would look like. Holy fuck! If you're watching this from California, I can only imagine what the rules are there. Uh, but in Ohio, for instance, uh, if we collect a security deposit that is more than one month's rent, uh, and then the tenant stays there for an additional year, we are actually required to pay that fucking asshole <laughs> interest on the money we're holding. But here's the kicker, right? As a licensed real estate broker, I am required to put that money in a non-interest-bearing trust account. I'm required by the Ohio Division of Real Estate to do that, right? So run the math on that one, right? I am forced to put the money in an account where I cannot collect interest on it. Okay, fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I need to pay that guy interest on the money. How does that register? How does that make any sense, right? And the only reason that I need to collect that money in the first place is to mitigate my risk because he's already proven to be a piece of shit. Uh, but I can't earn interest on it, but I'm required to pay him interest uh, for the tax of working with some guy who's a piece of shit, right? Makes no fucking sense, number one. Number two, guys, if you've ever dealt with a horrible, bad, terrible tenant, bad, horrible eviction, your uh, loss, your risks are going to be much higher than that additional month's deposit, right? So then you're probably thinking, well, what about the guy who's going to play a year in, pay a year in advance, man? You get 12 months up front. Okay, that's great, man. So the guy pays you 12 months up front, right? Everything's cool, everything's fine. Then you get to month 13, and then he fucks you. So what's the difference between him fucking you on month 13 versus fucking you on month 2? Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.